G'day guys, how you going? Hope you're doing well and taking care of yourself. Well, unfortunately what we are witnessing at the moment is the wholesale destruction of Australia. Everything that we know as Australia and all the things that made Australia a very great place to live uh, really are under attack. Now, here in Queensland, the Pelachook has come out and told everybody that they're going to be hiking up taxes on housing. There's going to be big new taxes on land and property across the state around the country in actual fact. You see this new idea is to uh, give a disincentive for people to own properties across Australia. So if you own a few properties or a property here in Queensland, but you also own property elsewhere in Australia, they're going to tax you to death. They're going to make sure that you pay a huge sum of money in this unjustified tax so that, you know, basically you decide maybe I should get rid of that property. Now their idea is to create this system so that it's alleviating the housing problem. But that's not true. That's not going to happen at all. Quite a few economists are actually saying that this is bizarre and unusual and a very unique but disturbing kind of concept. And they've never heard of it before. That uh, how can you possibly uh, tax people for investments when uh, it's going to be a disincentive to have investments, which in turn causes that problem where there are no rental properties. But at the same time, it reduces the value of houses because people don't want to buy them because they're paying too much tax if you're owning properties interstate. So essentially what happens is that the housing market starts losing value and taxes stay up high and they keep dragging in all that tax money because a lot of people will continue to hold on to their properties, their investment properties. They'll simply jack up the rent cost in the house that somebody's living in. So we see again that the poor guy cops it in the neck uh, to pay for these taxes. But this is what Labor does because they're communists and they're all about destroying anything of true value so that, you know, we all suffer and have nothing. Mm, build back better, I'm pretty sure they call it these days instead of their communist utopia. But the point of it is, is that they're doing this because Labor and their communist cronies know that there's about $10 trillion in the Australian housing sector. A huge amount of money that is propping up the country, I think it's like 40% or maybe even more, of the whole market of Australia. It's absolutely enormous when it comes to housing in Australia and investment. So they have to make sure that, you know, they break these things because you can't have a country turn into a third world country if it's still got value in it. Now I'm pretty sure really what's going on in the background here is that they want to disrupt the housing sector and uh, to devalue it and make sure that, you know, people are happy to own nothing, that old chestnut, right? So they'll increase these taxes. Now we're seeing a lot of new taxes coming in uh, recently, especially since the election. It's not just federal, but also state governments that are doing this. Now this is a Queensland concept, but it will affect people outside of Queensland as well. Now you can guarantee that if Queensland starts dragging in huge amounts of money through taxes on something as crazy as this, how long will it be before the other states join in and start doing the same thing? So it's not going to be just contained to Queensland. We've seen these things happen many times before, especially over the last two years, is that one state government comes up with an idea and the next thing you know, they all jump in and every state government's doing exactly the same thing. So we really can see now that they're trying to attack this market and to devalue it. That's essentially what's going on. Because these properties that are going to be put onto the market certainly are not going to go into the hands of first home buyers. People simply can't afford to get a mortgage at the moment. Uh, very few people, especially millennials, have managed to scrape up the kind of money that you need for a deposit. And even if we saw the price of houses, say, drop 20%, they're still well out of the reach of most people trying to get into the market. So it's obvious that it's not for first home buyers, right? But it certainly will allow a lot more properties to come onto the market that can be gobbled up by corporate interests. Now, we've seen that happen before around the world, that's for sure. There's a lot of those globalists out there that, you know, they spruik that same old mantra of, you know, build back better and uh, you'll own nothing and be happy. Somebody owns it along the way somewhere, okay? Because if you're renting your life, essentially, I think Malcolm Roberts called it uh, life via subscription or something like that, but somebody owns it. And uh, if it's not the government, then it's a corporate interest. So all of these properties are going to be funneled into a particular area. That hasn't quite shown itself yet, but no doubt it will eventually, and unfortunately by the time we do see exactly where it all ends up, it'll be well too late as usual. 
but the fact of the matter is is they are definitely planning to bring this country to its knees and they're making sure they're starting with the housing sector that's for sure because it's such a, a gigantic market that if you you don't start somewhere um, and start making it very difficult for people to actually own properties well your whole own nothing and being happy is not going to work we all know that you're not going to be happy owning nothing uh, the average person understands that concept and uh, anybody who's new to the idea that is introduced to it suddenly realizes quite quickly that uh, that's not a good idea but it's only people who want to be in control and uh, are vying for their positions in the new system that's coming you know the communist one the centralized global government system that one you know and uh, we can see that happening all the time and i'm quite sure that a lot of these so-called premiers and leaders and politicians that are actually in power at the moment are jostling for those very positions of some sort of governor or something like that but they're definitely looking for positions in that new system but i'm digressing a little bit there because that's a whole nother topic isn't it now this housing problem is going to get a lot worse that's for sure they're not doing anything to fix these problems and as we all know you can't tax something back to health it just doesn't work the only way you really do have economic recovery of any kind is if you reduce taxes and have tax cuts in areas that make it a lot easier for people to have you know free up some of their income to maybe go to the movies or go to a restaurant or to buy that extra pair of jeans or those sorts of things that's what keeps the economy ticking over it isn't things like taxes that does it you know they need a lot of taxes at the moment because they've got a whole heap of spending that they're planning on doing and creating this Mm, communist utopia which is basically everybody's on some sort of government welfare check remember they were always talking about the universal basic income that one's still in the background you can't forget about that and that certainly does take a lot of government money which is you know taxpayers money our money they like to you know spend this money and say that you're getting something for free but nothing is for free and they keep on telling us that they're doing it for our own good Every time I hear the government saying they're doing things for our own good, you can pretty well guarantee that it's not for our own good and that it's going to harm us in some way pretty soon or if not in the long run. But this is what they're doing and they're going to make sure that they're going to tax everything to absolute oblivion and uh, the economy will collapse. It will fall to pieces. And if we see the housing sector fall to pieces here in Australia, look out. We're going to have a whole heap of trouble. You can't have a big blowout in one part of the economy and not have it you know, cascade down and affect all sorts of other things. And it simply just has to happen. But this is the agenda. It's always been the agenda and that is to bring us all down, to make sure that we lose all of our things of value. This is why you'll see a lot of things have lost a lot of value recently. It is quite surprising just how quickly things of true value are becoming worthless, yet they steamroll ahead with all of these ideas. Now here in Queensland, they certainly don't shy away from taxing people. It really is getting quite ridiculous, but uh, every time they see an opportunity to slap a new tax on, sure enough, there it is. We saw that recently with the coal mining. They bunged another tax on there, and yet now you've got Japan jumping up and down because of this tax, and it's the first time I've ever seen Japan screaming at Australia for any particular reason, other than maybe back in World War II. But here we go, this is just the way it happens now. They just slap a tax on everything and nobody pays any attention because the government turns around and says, well, it's for our benefit so that we can pay for this, that or the other. But it's all these socialist concepts at the end of the day. They're not really going to be doing anything that's going to benefit the nation or build the nation. It's about propping up their regimes to make sure that they can follow all the way through to the end. Now, these economists who are talking about this are saying that the Palace Chook is doing this to balance the checkbook. Uh, for when it comes election time but there's still a fair way away and I really don't think it has anything to do with that uh, we went into the last election with something in the region of 80 billion dollars debt here in Queensland well over that now we're absolutely swimming or probably drowning in debt here in Queensland and it didn't seem to worry the people here in Queensland very much and the Palatook got voted in again I really don't think they're going to be paying too much attention to the level of debt that Queensland's in that's just not how people are looking at it Everybody likes that free handout all the time, but well, they think it's free, but they pay for it in the long run. You know, like when it costs $200 to fill up your petrol tank and they sort of get a little bit worried about it, but then they get, you know, sidetracked and, you know, and then off they go like a child in the forest singing nursery rhymes. They certainly don't pay attention for too long. That news cycle's so quick. You know, it was just a few weeks ago that Palachuk was bringing a partner to those government meetings where he really shouldn't have been at, but everybody's forgotten about that already, haven't they? 
They've also forgotten the fact that she locked us all down and forced us to wear masks and she's turning teachers against each other and making them, you know, lose wages because, you know, they didn't comply to the jab, all that sort of stuff. Nobody seems to remember that. It's all last week's news and they're just interested in today's news and maybe what's going to happen tomorrow. But even when that tomorrow news does come, it lasts for about 24 hours and then they forget about it. But this is the world we live in now, isn't it? So this tax that they're shoving down our throats certainly is going to do some heavy damage to us, but they won't pay much attention to it very long. See, because a lot of Australians, they just look at it, well, if it's not me, it's all okay. You see, it's rich people. Let's tax those rich people. Let's make those rich people suffer. But they really do forget that it's the rich people, not the mega wealthy, just the, you know, moderately wealthy people who own businesses, small businesses and medium-sized businesses that give you a job. How many people in Australia are employed by small and medium businesses? About 50%, I think, probably even more. You know, the small and medium businesses in Australia really are the backbone of our economy. And if they're devastated, well, we're in a lot of trouble then. But, you know, again, they just looked at the rich and the enemy because this is how people have been taught for so long. And this is the, the real thing that the Labor governments, be they state or federal, really push down everybody's neck. Is it there for the worker and the, and the little guy and this type of stuff while they support international corporations and international agreements and international outfits like the World Economic Forum? They're all about that, that's for sure. But they, yeah, people still believe that they're there for the little guy, but they are certainly not. They're all about destroying the middle class to make sure that everybody's equal equally poor and equally suffering.